What does it mean to be called in spite of? Our scripture reading is from Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, and after being there for a day, he proclaimed the message, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. There is no other book among the 66 books of the Bible that is like Jonah. No other book includes the prophet who was reluctant in answering his call, winding up in the belly of a fish. To appreciate the book of Jonah, it's important to know what's in each chapter as they tell the story of Jonah. There's four chapters. The first chapter is about God's call for Jonah to go to Nineveh. Now, to appreciate this call, it's important to know that Nineveh was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire, which had been especially cruel to Israel. It was against all that Jonah thought possible to be called by God to go to the arch enemy of Israel and to preach to, that they should repent. To fully appreciate God's call of Jonah, it's important to understand that the first chapter of Jonah is about God's grace that extends beyond Jonah even to those who are Jonah's enemies. Well, Jonah is reluctant to do what God commands, and so he purchases Pharaoh on a boat to run away from his call. But in spite of his running away, God would not let go of Jonah. As a great storm came up and threatened to swallow the boat that Jonah was on, as a result of the storm, Jonah is thrown into the sea and is swallowed by a great fish that God has prepared just for that occasion. For three days and three nights, Jonah spends time in the belly of the fish, reflecting on God's call to go to Nineveh. The second chapter of Jonah is about what goes on while Jonah is in the belly of the fish. As Jonah prays to God, and as Jonah pronounces and confesses at the end of his prayers that salvation comes from the Lord, and as a result of his prayer, the Lord commands the fish to spit up Jonah onto dry land so that he might deliver the message God had given him to share. The third chapter of Jonah is the pivotal chapter, where, and it was our scripture reading today, where Jonah goes to Nineveh, still reluctant, but going to, going to Nineveh. And there he preaches one of the shortest sermons in the Bible, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. In doing this, Jonah fulfilled his responsibilities. But to his dismay, the Ninevites repent. They proclaim a fast and they put on sackcloth as a sign of their repentance. God, upon seeing this response of the Ninevites, repents of what he was going to do and he shows mercy to the enemy of Israel. All of which leads to the fourth chapter of the story of Jonah, 
the reluctant prophet who, in spite of his reluctance, God used to share the message of God's grace. As Jonah sees the response of the people of Nineveh, he grows angry with God in the fourth chapter and prays to the Lord, saying, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my country? This is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I know, for I knew that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from punishment. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Well, in the fourth chapter, rather than granting Jonah's request to be to die, God speaks to Jonah and teaches Jonah a message about life. As a plant that yielded its, that yielded shade to Jonah from the sun was destroyed by a worm. And Jonah, and God speaks to Jonah about the importance of repentance and of how God cares for all of creation, for all people. Well, there is no dramatic conclusion to the book of Jonah. There is no parting of the Red Sea, no, no going through the Jordan, no fall of Jericho, of the walls of Jericho. There is simply the message that God is a God of mercy. Sometimes in spite of who we are, in spite of our reluctance to share that mercy, God is a God of mercy. Frederick Buechner wrote of how the book of Jonah tells of God's mercy being extended to Jonah, in spite of Jonah's reluctance to do what God requested. Here's what Buechner writes. Within a few minutes of swallowing the prophet Jonah, the whale suffered a severe attack of acid indigestion, and it's not hard to see why. Jonah had a disposition that was enough to curdle milk. When God ordered him to go to Nineveh and tell them there to shape up and get saved, the expression on Jonah's face was like that of a man who had just gotten a whiff of trouble in his septic tank. In the first place, the Ninevites were foreigners, and thus off his boat. It, in the second place, far from wanting to see them get saved, nothing would have pleased him more than to see them get what he thought they had coming to them. It was the result of a desperate attempt to get himself out of the assignment that he got himself swallowed by the well instead. But the well could not stomach him for long. And in the end, Jonah went ahead and with a little more prodding from God, did what he had been told. He hated every minute of it. And when, the, and when the Ninevites succumbed to his eloquence and promised to shape up, he sat down upon under a leafy cater oil plant to shade him from the blistering sun and smoldered inwardly. It was an opening that God could not resist. He caused the castor oil plant to shrivel up in the, in the heat. And when Jonah got all upset at looking back to in, in the ghastly, and when Jonah got all upset at being back in the ghastly heat again, God pretended to misunderstand what was bugging him. Here you are, God said, all upset out of pity for one small castor oil plant that has shriveled up. So what's wrong with having pity for this whole place that's headed for hell in a handcart, in a handcart if something's not done about it? Well, as I mentioned in the beginning, there's no other book in Jonah in the Bible among the 66 books of the Bible, that's like the story of Jonah. Other books are attributed to other prophets, some longer, a few shorter. But in the four chapters of the story of the book of Jonah, 
we hear the message of God's grace being extended in spite of who people are at times, in spite of who we are. While there are no other books that have quite the same message that Jonah has, is an invitation for us to hear God's call in our lives, sometimes in spite of who other people are, but usually in spite of who we are. Today, where is God calling you to go in spite of yourself? May we pray. God, use us, teach us, hold us in your grace so that in spite of who we are, we might answer your call to share your grace this day. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, amen. Friends, may God bless you in spite May God bless you because, may God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, amen.